Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome once again to Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Sunday School Session. We thank you for joining us this beautiful day. We will begin with the word of prayer, as usual. Almighty and most gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for those your people. Lord, we thank you for those who have a mind to know the truth and to seek your word out of the, your law. We ask your guidance that we rightly divide your word, Lord, and that we hide your word in our hearts, that we might be ready to go back with you on your return. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray, amen, and thank God. Praise the Lord, everyone, once again. This is Pastor Smith, and we are coming to you from the Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Church, and we are located at 1332 Holcomb Avenue in East Point, Georgia. We thank God for you. And we start our continue our series that we are talking about Daniel. Daniel. Amen. And in our lesson today, Daniel shares with us some of his prophecy that was to take place and is still to take place in the near future. Uh, our subject today is Daniel prophesies the son of man. Daniel gave some prophecies uh, for the end times and for the future. And in our lesson today, he's talking about in his prophecy, the son of man. Our lesson is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. Again, Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. And the text read, I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fire of flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominions taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged uh, for a season and time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, Nations, languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So here we have Daniel having a vision of God shows what is to come in the future. So Daniel, remember we started this series on Daniel a few Sundays ago, where he was one of the young men that was taken captive and taken to Babylon. But God, because Daniel refused to give into the world's culture of Babylon and refused to bow down uh, before the great statue that the king had built, he served only the true God. God gave him favor. And God gave him a special talent where he could interpret dreams. And God gave him just great favor 
and he was a very, very wise man, and he became uh, one of the uh, major prophets, one of the prophets. So here in our lesson today, he is sharing some of his prophecy about the end time and things that were to come. Now, our lesson today says he prophesies the Son of Man. Now, in chapter 2, Daniel uh, shares his prophecy about the great stature that's made out of iron and brass and a comp and all that. Uh, in our lesson today, chapter 7, he shares another vision where he sees uh, the kingdoms of this world uh, that are represented by different animals. At this time, when he first had the vision, he was looking at the kingdoms that were at that time, the Persian, the Medio, um, Medio Persian, the Greek, uh, the Roman Empire. And he was looking at those uh, different uh, kingdoms that were ruled by men and that rose up to be a great power among them, the Babylonian Empire. And so these were represented by different animals in his uh, vision that because these animals had great power, like for example here, uh, we have uh, the leopard with wings and le the leopard is one of the, in fact, supposed to be the fastest animal on earth and it can run I believe around about 70 miles per hour that's pretty fast this kingdom rose up very fast so these animals with representing these different four kingdoms was the lion that had two wings the lion you know is a strong animal he's supposed to be king of the jungle so these represented that um, kingdoms that rose up and were in power. Here we have the bear with three ribs in its mouth. And we know the bear is a very strong animal and it has three ribs uh, in its mouth, which indicate that he's taken over these three smaller uh, kingdoms. And as we said, the leopard uh, with the wings, uh, with the four wings, which uh, he's already, the leopard is already a fast, speedy animal. And that means this kingdom rose up very quickly. I believe it was in the old days and represented Alexander the Great, uh, where he rose to power in a very short time and captured a lot of territory. And so he became a very great ruler of a vast, territory in a very small amount of time, which represent by the leopard, which is very speedy, very fast. And then he saw also in our lesson today, a beast that has 10 horns, 10 horns. If you see the 10 horns on the head of this beast, and I believe our lesson said this beast had iron teeth. And you know something that has iron teeth, teeth are used to tear, iron to devour. So that if it's made out of iron, that means that this beast uh, is very powerful because he devours other uh, animals or other kingdoms. And if I remember correctly, uh, in the prophecy, uh, out of the ten horns is going to rise a smaller horn in the middle of these 10 horns. And we'll talk about that uh, very uh, shortly. Daniel's prophecy in the Old Testament, uh, we read about Nebuchadnezzar. And we read about Nebuchadnezzar. He was a great king, even though a wicked one, and he ruled Babylon. And remember, they were powerful because Babylon uh, the king of Babylon was the reason that Daniel and a lot of the Jews found themselves living in Babylon because that king, Nebuchadnezzar, rose up with a lot of power and he, 
in fact, uh, defeated uh, Judah of uh, Jerusalem and he overtook Jerusalem and he destroyed the temple. And in doing so, he even took some of the Jews and some of the well-appointed uh, Jews, when I say well-appointed people like Daniel, who, could, who was smart, who were handsome, because they wanted people in their kingdom. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar wanted people on his staff who could learn quickly, who could rise to power under him. So this is how Daniel and even the Hebrew boys found themselves in Babylon. But remember, the Babylonian Empire did not last forever because the Babylonian Empire uh, was defeated, I believe, by the media, Medes uh, Persians. Amen. And so all of these empires, human governments, that's what they represent. These were human governments. They were powerful, and they rose up over a period of time to get great power, and they were conquering people who conquered other nations and had people uh, reverencing, reverencing them and bowing down to them because they were powerful kings. That period in history uh, has passed, but Daniel's, keep in mind, Daniel's visions looked even further to the future and even to our time, even the messianic times and the times that we call the apocalyptic times. A lot of Daniel's uh, visions, <coughs> excuse me, dealt with the apocalypse. <coughs> Things that were coming in the end time. And so that's where we want to focus our attention. We're looking at uh, the countries that are powerful today. And they're represented. Let's take, for example, our own country, the United States. If you look uh, on our money, you look uh, at the symbols, just, even today, countries have symbols that represent them. And America is represented by the eagle, by the eagle. So you got countries that are represented uh, by the bear, uh, by different uh, animals. Because, and they are choosing animals. They didn't choose butterflies. They didn't choose a house cat or the common dog, but they chose power for animals that we know have great power and that uh, have the ability to reign over the animal kingdom uh, to destroy others. And that's why uh, when we go uh, to the parks, uh, national parks in some of our states, uh, we're told to look out for the bears because they are powerful and can be destructive. And we know that even today, uh, the leopard with this spot, and these animals are very fast. The eagle is one of the strongest birds of the air. And America, we know, is very strong, is very powerful. One of the most powerful countries in the world. So we fit into this grand scheme of things uh, and fit into the future that is to come and how we fit into God's plan. Now, in Daniel's vision, we see in verse 12, it says, he beheld to the, well, start in verse nine, that uh, the thrones were cast down. In other words, these kingdoms rose to great power. But the time came when their power was diminished and they fell. Babylon the Great, we hear talk about Babylon, 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 King Nebuchadnezzar. In the history books, there's a lot written about him because he was a great king as far as the world was concerned. And he was a powerful king. That's why 
Uh, he had all of his his uh, well known uh, people who were, I guess, worked with metals to construct this huge, huge uh, statue, and had all people to bow down to it. And everybody who did not, he had them put to death. That's why the three Hebrew boys were thrown in the furnace of fire because they did not bow down to this image that Nebuchadnezzar had constructed. All right. And he, that was the Babylonian Empire. But then other empires came along. The Babylons were defeated uh, by the Medes and the Persians. So all of these kingdoms had their time in the world. We are talking about earthly, real kings, real kingdoms. On earth, they rose to power. The Greeks, uh, the Romans, we had the Greeks under Alexander the Great. He was, that's why he was called Alexander the Great. Had a lot of power, rose to great prominence, but in due time, his kingdom lost its statue in the world. So we had the Roman, the Roman Empire was very great. They covered a vast uh, uh, area, a wide um, territory. And people, they rule over a large number of people. And they rule, they had a lot of control over the people. All right, so now, thank you. Now we have Daniel's uh, prophesied what's going to happen in our time. We have great kings of the world. We have Russia, I believe, which is represented by the bear. We have America. We have America represented uh, by the eagle. We have Great Britain, the European uh, countries. And we know as in our history, a historical period of time today, we have the great, uh, the union of the 10 countries in Europe that are, are banded together. And I understand with these 10 countries, banding together the common market where they operate as one big unit, even though they are 10 different countries, they are operating and standing together as one. 10 powerful countries. Amen. But if we read in our study of Daniel, out of these 10 countries, there's going to rise a little horn. If we study the prophecy, there is going to arise another little horn out of the middle of the 10 horns that are already there. And it's my understanding and a general belief that this little horn that's going to rise up is going to be the Antichrist. So somewhere right now, all of this is in progress because we are living in the end time and Daniel prophesies about the end times, how these kingdoms are going to rise up into great power. And among them, there is going to be one who is going to rise up and in our lesson today, we find out that he speak great words. And it said, verse 11, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. And we refer and we look into it. We describe him as the beast. Now, when we think of a beast, we do not think of a beast as being a tame animal, but being ferocious being very mean, very strong, and very fearful. And in Daniel's vision, he pictured these beasts, and especially this last beast, 
as being very ferocious. Amen. And but then in our lesson today, Daniel also sees the ancient of days. Who is this ancient of days? This is we are referring to God, the power. We are referring to uh when Jesus now we're talking about all of these kingdoms that are going to rise and have risen even today. Great Britain is a great power house in the world. America is a great country, a great power, powerful country in the world today. So we have these different entities, these different governments that are represented by different symbols. That's what these are, symbols that represent the various governments. So we have Russia is a mayor, major player today. Russia right now is in battle with the Ukraine. Then we got all of these nations of, in the Middle East that are joining together. And they are fighting Israel. So these are great powerful forces that are in the world today. These powerful nations. And all of them are vying for power. All of them are seeking more power to become great. But the time is coming when out of all of these nations in the world, all of these rulers of these nations, one is going to rise up and that's the little horn and he's going to become a man of great power where all of the world is going to be turning to him. We have been talking about the beast, uh, taking the image of the beast, the number 666, all of this Daniel sold years and years ago and prophesied, that's how we can read about it, he prophesied that all of these things were coming to pass. And my friends, we are in the era, we are in the historical time in history when we are moving very, very fast, rapidly toward the man of this time, the mark of the beast, the man who is to be called the Antichrist, who, as Daniel heard, speaking great words, he's going to speak great words of blasphemy against God, against God's kingdom. And as we move forward into uh, the closing of this age, he's going to wreck havoc. That's why he's called a beast. Because he's going to wreck a lot of heaven and cause a lot of trouble, especially against Israel, and which is going to lead to the great tribulation. A lot of them are going to be saved because they're going to refuse the mark of the beast, because as a result, they're going to be put to death because with the mark of the beast, you're going to need, and just like during uh, Daniel's time, everybody who wanted to survive and not be put to death uh, by the king, they had to bow down to this great image that had been built. In our period of time, the last day, the beast who is going to be a man who is going to ascend to a throne on earth, have his kingdom, and he's going to demand power and recognition and authority from the people on earth if they want to be able to buy, to be able to sell, be able to survive. They're going to have to uh, take the mark of the beast. So all of this is what we call prophecy of the end times. And Daniel, God raised him up to be this great prophet to prophesy of the end time. A lot of things now that you, we read in Daniel, the prophecies that Daniel gave us in the book of Daniel coincide 
are right alongside the same prophecy that we read about in the book of Revelation. In Daniel, he was prophesied what was to come. In the book of Revelation, we get a clearer a picture of the prophecy being revealed, hence the name Revelation. John reveals what is to happen, how it is to happen, and what is going to be the final end of these kingdoms, these earthly kingdoms. And in our lesson today, we find that the beast is going to rise and he's going to have a lot of power, a lot of authority, but his authority will not exceed the authority of the final king, Jesus. And we see here the ancient of throne, uh, throne. Those who are looking, we the Bible describes him having hair white like snow. See his white hair sitting on the throne, a fiery throne, whose wheels of fire, fire represents God's power, and it also represents God's judgment. Okay, so what, how is this going to play? In the end, when this beast speaks these great words against Almighty God, against Christ, Christ is going to be sitting on the throne in all power. That's why we serve him today. That's why we worship him. That's why we hear his voice. Because he is going to be crowned the everlasting king. And of his kingdom, in our lesson today, it said, there shall be no end. Verse 14, it said, there was given unto him dominion. Christ is going to rule, set up his kingdom. He is going to rule once and for all, and his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom. All of the kings of the earth must then face the one and only true king. We must then they must then face Jesus, must face Christ, the one who they have battled against. Even today, all of these rulers who rule over these great world empires and who speak out against God's laws, God's principle, all of this, this time when the crooked is going to be made straight, God represented Christ, who all power is then going to be given over to him. He is going to sit on the throne, set up his everlasting kingdom, and all of the nations of the world are going to recognize and have to honor him as being the one and only true king. And it said that was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all nations, all people, and all languages should serve him. And because his dominion shall be an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. The Babylonian kingdom was great. And even today, all the nations, Great Britain, the European common market, all those great countries that band together are powerful. The United States is one of the most powerful countries in the world. That's why so many people are trying to get here because of the power that we have. Russia is a power today to be reckoned with. The Far East, the Middle East, these are 
world powers, empires today that are currently existing. But our lesson, Daniel let us know that these kingdoms, their power is going to be diminished, taken away from. And it says, verse 12, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away from them. So Daniel is seeing the rise and the fall of earthly kingdoms because we are fast approaching the end times when world kingdoms will be cast down and will no longer be in rule. The only kingdom then will be that of Christ and his everlasting kingdom, which shall be the ruling throne. And he lets us know all people, all nations, all of the languages, all tongues all over the world is then going to recognize the kingdom of Jesus. And when they look up, he saw the ancients of ancients. Because all of this is going to be destroyed. And God is going to reign. And he says, then there is going to be judgment. And all of these nations are going to be judged. Because when Daniel looked, he saw the multitude that was with the ancient of ancient, all of these angels, but then he saw 10,000 times 10,000 that are standing to be judged. So the time is coming when the world as we know it will be no more and the ancient of ancients and Jesus Christ is going to sit on the throne. We want you to continue with us next Sunday as we look into more of Daniel's prophecy, where Daniel sees future kingdom. Well, he looking deep into the future, seeing future kings, and next Sunday's lesson is Daniel chapter 8, verses 19 through 26. So follow us again next Sunday with Daniel sees future kingdom. We thank you for joining us this Sunday. God bless you, keep you in his care. Lord, thank you. We ask you to look on us, open our understanding, bless those, keep us this week, Lord, and let your word have its way in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.